Hey, Bill1911 here. Today we're going to clean and lubricate the Beretta Mini Cougar. Now this was my carry piece for a long time. It's what I carried with me. Um, because it's a small gun, but it's also 45 caliber, so it's got a lot of walk to it. And the small size makes it very easy to hide it on my person. Um, sometimes we talk about something called gun fit and gun fit has more than one meaning um, first you want the gun to fit you physically so I wanted to show you this that this gun the handle is actually a bit small for me okay but it has a magazine extension on it that then makes it fit my hand very very well Okay, now that's just a little plastic piece that goes on the end of the magazine that makes it integral to the handle. All right. So, as is always the case, when we do one of these, we're going to verify that there is no ammunition in the gun and that there's no ammunition present where we're working on the gun. So. Hard get it in the position where you can see it. All right. It's okay, so we're empty. And this one is, like I said, it's a Beretta, and it has that same disassembly lever that we see on a lot of Berettas. Okay. There's a release button on the far side that you press in. Okay. Then you rotate that lever down. And the whole thing simply comes apart in your hand. Wonderful system. Great engineering by the folks at Beretta. I really like this gun a lot. So, as is always the case, we're going to take it apart. This one isn't all that complicated to get apart. That's all there is to it. Okay. Then we're going to clean that bore, that bore swab it all out lubricate everything back up and put it back together so we're going to need a cleaning rod and I like to use a cleaning jag now this is a cleaning jag right here okay now I kind of got started using cleaning jags because back in the day when I was in law enforcement uh, I was a sniper and so I shot at long range in practice a lot so when you're shooting like that on a regular basis there are a couple of areas that if you um, are not very careful you can actually cause damage to the gun one of the ways to cause damage to the gun is that if while you're cleaning it this area of the barrel right at the muzzle this is called the crown of the barrel now, I don't know if you can see it I hope so but if you look it's not just flat it's actually on the walls of the barrel are rounded a little bit okay all the way around so that keeps you from damaging the rifling that's on the end of the barrel down in here so if something hits it it hits on that crown instead of actually on the rifling itself so when you're cleaning if you're going through the muzzle and you're banging your rod around against this muzzle you can damage the rifling right here at the end of the barrel okay so there are ways that you can you can combat that but on the other end of the barrel on the chamber end you can also get into trouble if you're banging around on the rifling at what's known as the throat of the barrel. Now that's right there, just past the chamber where the rifling actually starts in the barrel. So it's really not an issue with handguns so much um, because they're usually at short range anyway. But I just got into the habit of using a jag, and I just like the way it cleans the, the bore. It just does a really good job on it. So, 
with that in mind, we're going to need some bore cleaner. Now this is a military surplus bore cleaner. Um, we don't really push any particular products. So, um, I mean, if somebody wanted to sponsor us, that, that would be just fine. Uh, then we might do some more pushing of that particular product. But for right now, this was inexpensive, and it's a, it's a good bore solvent. It takes the stuff out of the barrel for me. And you're going to need a, a gun oil. Now, I always recommend use an oil that is specifically designed for guns. Um, the reason why is that there are specific parts in some guns that are made out of plastic, and those plastic parts, um, if you use an oil that's incompatible with those plastic uh, pieces, it can damage them. Now, honestly, I've never heard of one being damaged. I have never seen one being damaged, but I have seen it in other mechanical devices that use plastic parts. So. I always recommend use an oil that, and I would go so far as to say use the oil that the gun manufacturer says is good um, because they've designed this gun uh, to be compatible with the oil that they're suggesting. So we're going to need a gun cleaning patch or two and what we're going to do is we're going to just start out by pretty much cleaning everything up. Now, I make my own gun patches, so I have a lot of them, and the reason why is because I clean a lot of guns. Um, not just mine, but I sometimes clean guns for other people. That's part of what I do. So, uh, I have kind of wanted to cut costs wherever I can, so what these gun patches are made out of is just simply a double nap flannel. Now this happens to be white. Now I like white because it gives me some other options that I will show you a little later on. Okay, But it's, it's not expensive. You can buy this stuff in fabric stores and then just cut your own patches to size. So we're going to wet the patch in the solvent. Okay. And we're just going to start cleaning everything that we can see and touch, okay? Because we're going to get stuff out of here that you didn't realize was in it. Especially if the gun is one that you carry, because you'd be amazed at what gets down into that action. Uh, lint from your clothing, uh, body hair, uh, skin that, that comes off your body all the time. Um, these things are very common to get into the action of the gun and they can cause it to foul a little bit. Now if you can see we're getting some dirt out of it so that's a good thing. Now this one isn't grossly dirty but some of them are. Alright so we're going to continue the process until we're comfortable that we've got everything that we can get to on each part. Now we're going to do the same on the outside of the barrel as well as the inside of the barrel. We're going to start on the outside and just simply clean up what we can. All of these engagement points, all these little slots, and I used to like to use the term mammy jammies and mogators, which means absolutely nothing. <laughs> but there you have it. So we keep cleaning everything we can get to and get it all cleaned up. This one over the last few years since I retired has been really decorating the inside of my drawer more than anything else. I haven't shot it much and uh, I probably ought to take it out and shoot it again sometime pretty soon because I do like the gun. It's a fine shooting gun. It has a delayed blowback action which I explain in detail in another video. In fact I use this gun in that explanation. Now the delayed blowback, the way it works is that as the slide comes back, the barrel actually rotates inside the action, okay? And that rotation just burns up a lot of the recoil energy so you don't feel as much kick out of this little tiny 45 caliber as you think you would. It, it doesn't kick bad at all. It's very, very mild to shoot. Um, 
it's, it's one of the reasons why I like the gun so much. And it's also one of the reasons why this gun is very accurate. Now, this thing will flat dot your eye. So, very, very fine gun. All right, so I think we got all that cleaned up. Now, when your patch gets dirty, simply get another patch. That's why I make my own. I got plenty of them. Okay. And we're going to wet it again because we're going to about to start doing the bore now down the barrel. Okay. Now, this little jag has a little tip on the end of it. This little sharpened tip. And we're going to take that and we're going to literally impale our patch on it just like that and that holds it in place as we work it through the barrel now I always prefer to go from the chamber end of the barrel out the muzzle and that's so I don't bang that rod around on that crown out there that's that's one of the things that really hurts accuracy on these things okay and as you can see that's just with one push and it took a lot of junk out of that barrel but we're not done we're gonna keep going a little bit now I quite often do this in stages I'll do it like a two-step system I'm not going to today um, I'm gonna do this all in one but after you've pushed your patch through your barrel several times um, you're gonna get a lot of the junk out of it okay Again, once your patch gets dirty, get another patch. Wet it up and go back to work. So, this cleaning jag, I really like the job it does on the inside of the barrel. It gets them very clean. Um, it does, does a fine job of that. And that's why I use it. Um, a lot of people will use a bore brush, okay? and a ferrule to mop the inside of the barrel which is just fine you mop it with the ferrule get it nice and wet and then you run the bear the bore brush through it a few times and clean it out so i don't usually use them but it's for me it's more than it's more of a habit than anything else now this thing fits very tightly through this barrel as you can see it's snug and we're not getting much out of it anymore so I think we got most of it clean and now I'm going to show you why I like these white patches okay now flannel is flannel it's not going to matter if you ended up with plaid flannel for this job it would still work you just can't see it as well you can't see the dirt collect on the patch and uh, here's the other thing that you can use this patch for when you want to inspect the inside of the barrel, okay, it's a little bit dark in there. But if we use this as a mirror, can you see how much brighter it looks down in that bore? Makes a big difference on being able to see it. If I can get it in the right position again. There we go. And you can move the barrel around a little bit and pretty much see all of it and find out how clean it is. So now that I've showed you, I'm going to look at it myself. And I see a bunch of junk in there, so we're going to continue. Now, this time, I'm going to use a dry patch. I'm not going to wet it first, okay? We're going to use this and see where we get to. All right. Now, we're going to look down that barrel again. And yeah, it cleaned up very nicely. It looks real good in there now. Okay, so now we've inspected the barrel and we're satisfied that it's clean. Okay. We're just going to kind of dry up this stuff here. This excess that's on here. Now when we oil a gun, when we lubricate it, okay, it's important not to drown the gun in gun oil. Okay. You don't want it so slippery that you can't hang on to it. But you do want to get it lubricated. Alright, so just try and keep that in mind and don't use too much oil. A drop here and a drop there is really all that you need. It's pretty slippery stuff. Okay, I don't think I cleaned this part, so I think I'm going to do that right now. And stick this right through here and pull it through. 
just kind of buff this down a little bit. This is one of those wet patches that I used earlier and it wasn't very dirty so I figured I'd finish up on this one. Now I'm going to dry it up a little bit. All right. Now, when you take this gun apart, the engineers were really, really smart. They wanted to make sure that you put the gun back together the right way. So, if you'll look, right here, they actually put an arrow on this thing to show you the direction it goes back into the gun. Very nice of the folks at Beretta to do that. All right. So, the barrel is clean, but what we're going to do to it now to prevent rust from taking place inside that barrel is we're going to put some oil on the patch and run that oil down that barrel so we get a nice light coat of oil down inside that barrel. And do the same thing, stab it through that little tip that's on the end of the jag just like that and in she goes now I'm gonna probably swab this a couple of times like that to make sure I got it nice and well oiled in there uh, that's got it pretty well oiled up inside the barrel okay so we got our light coat of oil in there and everything looks good all right, so let's start putting her back together with some oil. All right, now wherever two pieces of metal rub together, you're going to get wear. The, the thing is you want to try and limit that wear as much as you can with, again, of course, without drowning the gun. So where you see moving parts that are shining okay can you see how that shines right along there well we definitely want to put a drop of oil on there we've got some shine going on back here in the back any place that you see that's shiny you know the two pieces of metal are rubbing together there you'll see the same thing inside the slide here all right right down here there's a little bit of a shiny spot and there's some shine going on in there and there's some shiny places in the back. Wherever you see these shiny spots, you're going to want to put a little drop of oil in there and lubricate it up. All right. Like that. Now, wherever you can see that these parts do move, you can see several of them in here that do move in the back of the slide back here. One of them is where the safety goes through the slide. And on those rotation points, you're going to want to put some oil in there. All right, so we've got that covered. We're going to do the same thing down inside the frame of the gun. I hope I held that in the right place for you to see that the, the safety lever goes through the gun. And as I rotate it, if I can get my big thumb out of the way, you can see it moving right in here. All right right in there okay so we're going to do the same thing in here where we see shiny spots and moving parts just going to put a drop of oil every place where we see a contact point where we know it's rubbing together we're going to put oil into those places all right you can look down in here this is the trigger spring right in here okay right there all right we're gonna put a drop of oil in that okay make sure that stays nice and lubed because again it cuts down on wear on the gun we don't want the gun to wear out so we're gonna just dab a little bit here and there and that's all we really need okay now we are going to oil this spring that is on our spring and guide rod assembly okay and in most cases I just kind of take the oil I put it on my fingers and I rub it all over it but that's not really very efficient with when it's 
a, a one-piece guide rod and spring because you need to oil the inside of the spring and that rod as well where it travels on itself so you're going to want to just run some oil into it and let it work through Now I've had some discussions about sometimes oil can get sticky on things like recoil springs, on things like uh, firing pin springs and rifles. Um, I really haven't had much trouble with it down here in South Florida, but sometimes in colder climates you're going to have to be really careful what oil or grease you use in your rifle because those colder climates you can really end up with a problem in it. Um, it can slow down your firing pin to the point where the gun just simply won't even fire. Uh, I have seen that happen on a gun the guy took up north and was hunting with it. So just keep trying to keep that in mind. Um, and get this rubbed around in here a little bit on all those parts and then we're going to put this puppy back together can be nice now that slips in there that slips in there and then we're going to take our frame that we just put all that oil on all the rest we're going to slip it together make sure it goes up against it, and then we rotate this lever back down into its locked position okay if I can get my hands on it right. Okay, now it's locked. Okay, now the gun's reassembled. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now I had a little oil on my fingers there, and I just made this a little slippery by touching it when I had the oil on my fingers. So, there we have it. That's the Beretta Mini Cougar. It's a fine little gun. They're hard to find. Um, in fact, I don't actually know of anybody else other than me that has one. I know that there are people out there and if you have one, you've got a real winner on your hands. This is a nice gun. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful to you and entertaining, please don't forget to hit the like button and by all means subscribe. And when you're done with that, come and visit us at askbill1911.com. Hi, Bill1911 here. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. Do not attempt any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. Also, if you're under 18 years of age, do not attempt any of these topics without the consent of your parent or guardian. Thank you.